All right, this is the video. We're going to go through the moto adjuster. Um, before I start this video, we're going to kind of explain what that moto adjuster is and, and how it's used. But in all reality, the moto adjusters for very, very big races, your, your gold cups, your large state races, um, where you really want to do efficiently for your customers and your riders and, and make sure that they are, you know, getting a good race and, and you're getting things moving quickly. And to do that, sometimes you've got to make an adjustment on a moto and you would really only want to repost that one moto or, or you know, make your correction. This isn't for the uh, weeknight race or the, or the smaller moto count races where, you know, you can probably hit the refresh button and rewrite motos faster than you can get on the phone with us, explain to us what the problem is, explain to us all the riders that are going to be affected by the move, and then have us gain an access code for you. It's not really a, a quick scenario to get that access code, so it's something you, you really want to make sure you're only utilizing for big races. You know, and the, the second thing is we've got 380 tracks out there. We've got, you know, everybody's running a couple times a week, and uh, you know, we would need to hire a whole other staff to, to handle the moto adjuster itself. If if they had to take, if everybody had to take calls, you know, on, on adjusting riders, so. Again, I, I, I've been in the other scenario where you've got to write motos and, and rewrite them. And, and trust me, if it's, uh, you know, really if it's getting under 50 motos, you're probably faster to, to rewrite, reprint, and repost those things after you make your corrections than get on the horn with us and, and get an access code and, and go through all the problems and get these writers adjusted. Um, you know, it, the more time you spend on the phone with us, you could have already had those printed. Now, obviously, you get upward of 100 motos and you're running a large gold cup race. You can probably spend a few minutes with us getting the corrections figured out. And we'll give you an access code to the moto adjuster. And then you can reprint those classes. So it, it becomes a real fine line of, of, you know, when is big enough to call, basically. And, uh, you know, we'll go through those. If, if you're running an event where we will probably allow the moto adjuster, you probably already have heard from us and, and know ahead of time, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and show it to you that way if anyone ever gets the opportunity to use it or, or you know, is, is running a state final or a large event and you may need to use it, uh, you, you've got some know-how of, of how it works. So um, you've got your scoring grid, you've got your motos written, everything like that, and, and now you've got a couple people at your window needing corrections. Obviously, at this point, you've called us uh, it, it challenges you with a code. That code uh, we would need to issue. Obviously, most likely, most of you are going to be running these larger races on the weekend, so you need to use our cell phones or our emails. All three of us, Brad, Bill, and myself, get our emails to our phone and usually can respond fairly quickly. But again, if you're in a correction situation, this is more of a cell phone call. And if one of us don't answer, try the next one. If they don't answer, try the next one. Leave us all messages, though, because sometimes we'll pass back and forth between each other. If, you know, if we're out during the weekend and we're with our families or something and, and we're getting that message, we'll, we, we internally kind of know who can handle something each day and we'll pass it on to them, too. So, you know, feel free to leave that message and, and always, uh, you know, don't stop at one. Move on to the next person and see if someone can help you. And obviously, Chris Luna and... Uh, you know, everybody else, too, in the track department can take those calls if you've got their numbers and, and you know, we'll, we'll get you the right access or, or get you the codes and, and figure out what needs to be changed. So um, the access code is different. It's unique. It's a unique unlock code, and it's only good for uh, that unlock. So it's good for that one move. You know, you can move that rider. And then, again, if you've got multiple corrections, you've got to get those figured out. But... You know, that, that access code we're issuing is kind of on the spot, and, and it's good just for that. So, you know, each time you've got something, you've got to go run it by us. And, and so that, that's why I say, you know, again, it's one of those things that, that you only use in a very large situation at a race. You're not, you're not going to, you know, need to be calling us for, for the local race on a, on a Tuesday night because we may just tell you, look, I'm not near a computer. You know, because that's the other thing. We, we've got to have an internet connection and we've got to have a computer to be able to generate that code for you and make documentation on what it is you're doing. So there's kind of a lot of parts to it. Um, 
at some point there'll be an unlock to the moto adjuster that that is a uh, kind of an auto feature which if you forgot to register someone or someone's in the wrong class you can always take people out but uh it, it auto puts them in so it makes sure that we're still building classes by the rules and the riders are still receiving their points so for this scenario, I'll, I'll do a couple different adjustments so everyone can get the idea of kind of how this thing works. As you can see, any moto that was built has a little plus sign next to it. So these will match your moto board that, that are out there and people have your corrections on. So uh, you can see all these novice classes built and, and this is a great example to use. And uh, Let's see if we've got an intermediate. So we've got an eight intermediate class and as you can see you push on that plus button and then it gives you the moto numbers of that class and then when you push the plus button on that it expands uh, what kind of people you have in that class so we've got three eight intermediates an eight girl and a an seven expert so at that point you kind of have to uh, decide what your changes are and, and for this scenario we're just going to say that one of these novices didn't tell you when they signed up that he was an ex or an intermediate now and uh, he needs to be out and moved into that intermediate class. Uh, kind of a common correction that you get, especially the larger race. So these arrows do exactly that. It moves the rider this way, or this one moves the rider that way. Uh, this one is going to take all the riders off the motor board, and you're going to be handwriting motos, so, so don't use that one. But you, know, you want to select the rider it is that you need to move, and then you're going to move that rider off the moto board and then you'll see that rider is now on this end of the spectrum and again if you have uh, left a rider out of the class you know he didn't get registered you would need to register him the same way you always would but then when you go into the moto adjuster his name would already be listed over here that way you can add him to the race but again the moto adjuster code is really not for that it's not for the guy that signed up late or uh, you know you're allowing to sign up late you know, th those are things that you're just going to have to rewrite and reprint the motos. Um, you know, the, the adjuster code is, is to bail you out of, of problems that you didn't create. You know, allowing someone to register after signups closed is kind of a problem you created, um, you know, unless there's some other sort of scenarios behind it. But we, we won't get into all that. We're just going to kind of go right through this thing. And, and um, that eight novice, what you need to do to him is hit the edit button. Changes proficiency to what it actually is now and what he's going to be racing. Uh, obviously intermediate. So now we've moved him to eight intermediate. And at that point, now you've got to go figure out what class he goes in. Um, you didn't have a nine intermediate. The seven intermediates looks like they built. So really, th this is a fairly simple move. But you can see how this can get very, very ugly very fast. If, if, if you took that guy out of that class and now that class doesn't make anymore... Now you're putting someone into a new class and, and you've got to kind of redistribute those other guys into another class. So um, that's why all these checks and balances need to go by us. And that's, that's where the whole verification code comes into play and, and, and all of that information. So um, as you click into here, now we've got the inner. You know what class you want to put him in. You want to put him in the eight inner. So you just go ahead and click on a rider in that class. Click over here. Uh, arrow that way that moves that rider into that eight intermediate class and now we've got those four eight intermediates racing in that class um, with the seven x and the eight girl so those classes you know that that's an adjustment and you'll notice here it, it did flag it as a repost which you want to leave flagged on uh, the repost is exactly that you're going to leave that then message on there and I'll show you why shortly what we're going to do here is print one of their class or, or you know a very another common thing that happens is you've got um, this is a good example of, of something but uh, 2630 cruiser you, you could essentially say that you know this person didn't want to race cruiser they got signed up in the wrong class they've never owned a cruiser but somebody accidentally signed them up in cruiser and this guy's actually a 14 expert. So um, you would move him off the moto board. You see that class now turned orange or red because that class is no longer making. There's only two riders in that class, and that's not enough to make a class. So n now we've got multiple adjustments that need to happen. So, uh, you know, you've got a girl's cruiser that, that looks like, you know, she is 
got another girl down here racing, but again, you, you, you start to get into those scenarios where unless you know all the class building rules, it's going to be very hard for you to, to adjust people. So that's why we take the moto adjusters so seriously. But, you know, the, the next adjustment obviously would be fixing your 14 cruiser and probably putting them in 14 expert if, uh, if all of this seems to make correctly. So you'll edit that rider, turn them into a cruiser for the day, not a girl, which again... Another example of why this thing can be so dangerous, because you can really take anyone and move them anywhere, which is uh, you know why you've really got to be careful. And as you can see, that, that cruiser class is still standing out, that, that it's not making. Um, and as you go around, you'll see that those are flagged as reposts. And, and then once you've made all your corrections, you want to hit save. Uh, this message is you will not normally see. If you do see it, You've got, you've got a lot of problems and you need to fix them first, but we're going to ignore these for, for the purposes of what it's telling me is that class doesn't have enough riders, so it's going to take them off the motor board, and that's fine because what I want to really show you is uh, the reposting, and I'm going to print my sheet through the scoring grid, um, and as you go in there, you'll see print repost only button. That's also on the reports menu if you use the reports menu, but uh, when that happens, it, it's physically flagging only those motos that are flagged as a repost so that you can go repost those motos. Um, we're going to do this one through the reports menu so that I can preview those on the screen. Uh, I don't want to do multiple classes per page because again I'm replacing sheets up there and, and, and that's a good way to you, you can do all motos, but you need to flag those as reposts, and then you'll see what happens is those motos that we adjusted now show that they're reposted, and this is something for the membership department, so they know that uh, one of you guys called us and, and did a repost. So there's checks and balances all the way through this process, but, uh, you know, so we, we need to document the changes you made so that our membership department knows when they see a repost come through that that wasn't approved uh, change by us in the track department. So, you'll see Moto 10 was a repost where we added or take, took away that rider, and then you'll see 8 Intermediate was a repost where we put him in Intermediate, and then obviously we moved that cruiser rider into Expert, and, uh, you know, those are your three reposts that, that we encountered in using the Moto Adjuster. So, at that point, if you did multiple class or classes per page when you printed, that's where you run into a lot of problems. Doing single classes is great because you could go literally pull that piece of paper down and now put this new one up with the same Moto 10, but it's reposted. So that's a quick, efficient way for you to get a repost accomplished. That is the Moto Adjuster. And again, if you, if you encounter the need to use it in a very serious situation, um, feel free to call us. We'll, we'll go through the changes with you, give you the code. The moto adjuster itself is right here, um, and this is the information we will need to give you that access code. All of this is kind of date driven and, and track number driven along with your request key. So, you know, each time you need to make an adjustment, we need to know about it. So we need this information and then we'll give you an access code that unlocks it to make that change. So that's the moto adjuster.